All right. Hello, class. Hope everyone has been having a uh, nice week. Today, we are going to go over hypothesis testing. And uh, this is going to go ahead and essentially wrap up the first half of the semester. Pretty incredible that uh, we've gone all this way. Some housekeeping. Uh, I believe we are we do not have class next week, and then the time afterwards, we will have our midterm. I will have a separate video, and I will have more information sent all to your emails about the midterm. But today, our lecture, we are going to go ahead and cover hypothesis testing, right? So in short, you know, when we have statistics, uh, you know, we, we go ahead and we've been really covering lots of what's called the descriptive statistics right so we would go ahead and we take numbers or data that we go ahead and collect and we tell a story about it right we go ahead and we say hey you know in our class you know, 60 percent of these students are pe majors and 40 percent of these students are uh, nutrition or dietetics majors right we would say the average height for the class is uh, five feet ten, you know, with a standard deviation of three inches going each way, right? We can talk about the, the gender distribution when we're saying that uh, more than half of the class are female, right? There, there's more females to males. We talked about proportions. Um, we've then talked about ways to go ahead and kind of draw samples from our population to go ahead and kind of uh, talk about uh, to, to go ahead and kind of create some references to understand how the population kind of compares, right? When we can't go ahead and we take samples, when we can't go ahead and possibly measure everybody. So now we're at the point where we want to go ahead and create a hypothesis. And then we want to go ahead and test the hypothesis, right? You may hear a lot that, oh, you know, uh, the differences between this group and another group is statistically significant. You may have heard that term before, right? And today what we're going to go ahead and do is really dissect what exactly that means, okay? Um, just a bit, just a, a note, there's going to be a point where you're going to, we're going to go over calculating p-values, right? And I'm going to talk through how to manually calculate p-values. I don't expect you to know how to manually calculate p-values. Um, when we go on to our next lecture, which is comparison of two means, I will show you how to calculate a p-value using SAS and other online tools and, and Excel as well. But really today is to kind of understand the process of creating a hypothesis and then testing it all out, right? So let's go ahead. We're going to move on to our outline for today, which is what is a hypothesis, right? How do we form a hypothesis statement? Uh, you know, maybe this should be one. How do we form a hypothesis statement? How do we go ahead and, and perform hypothesis testing? Uh, we are going to go ahead, and it's really important that you know about the null and the alternative hypothesis, as well as knowing the difference between one-sided versus two-sided uh, tales of hypothesis testing. Okay, so this is the outline. This is what we're going to go ahead and cover, and we shall proceed, right? So, you know, early on, uh, you've probably learned about what a hypothesis is, right? And uh, so let, let, let's go over it, right? What is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is an educated guess about something in the world around you, right? It should be testable either by experiment or by an observation, right? So I'll give you a couple of examples that I think uh, are relevant to you all, right? So for my dietetics folks, you know, there might be a new diet out there that works to reduce cholesterol, for my PE uh, and exercise science folks, you know, there might be a new strength training routine that we all think about is, is more effective, right? How do we know that either of these interventions or how do we know that either of these uh, are 
actually useful or or effective or there's actually a change, right? So you do this by forming a hypothesis, a hypothesis, and then you select test to go ahead and kind of uh, measure the difference and see if it's different or not, right? So uh, let's keep going and we'll dig deeper into those statements from there. So what is hypothesis testing, right? Hypothesis testing in statistics is a way for you to test the results of a survey or experiment to see if you have meaningful results. You're basically testing whether your results are valid by figuring out the odds that your results happened by chance, right? If your results may have happened by chance, the experiment won't be repeatable and has little use, okay? So a couple of ground rules when it comes to uh, the hypothesis testing process, right? First things first, you have to go ahead and create a null and an alternative hypothesis. So in inferential statistics, you cannot prove something to be true. What you need to do is you need to disprove it by finding an exception, okay? So your null hypothesis in this case would be all swans are white, right? This is, this is your, your hypothesis here. All swans are white. And then your alternative hypothesis would be all swans are not white, right? And so therefore you noticed how we just disproved our null hypothesis, right? And so uh, hopefully this, this visual makes a little bit more sense. And then in, in about two slides, we're going to go over really kind of the approach in terms of how we set up a alternative and a null hypothesis, right? So just remember, in inferential statistics, we're not proving something to be true. We're trying to disprove it by finding something else, right? An exception. Okay, so think about this, this swan example right over here. Okay, so, so let's go over really quick a overview of the steps for hypothesis testing, right? First things first, step one, figure out your null and your alternative hypothesis. There's going to actually be a step 1.5, which is determining whether it's a one tail or a two tail test. And we'll kind of go over that. Uh, it's, it's not quite its own step, but it's almost like a half intermediate step that falls between steps one and two, right? The next thing is going to go ahead, uh, the next step would be to determine the significance level, whether it's 0 0.05 or 0 0.01, right? Let me go over the difference. Then what you do in step three is you obtain a sample, right? So that was in our previous lecture where we went ahead and we talked about sampling, right? We have a population, and then what you want to go ahead and do is pull a little bit out of your pull uh, randomly select individuals from the population and then you make the comparison right and we want to go ahead and see if the difference uh, is within your determined significance level or not so depending on your steps one and two depending on what your null hypothesis is and your alternative hypothesis and the significance level that you chose you're then going to choose a statistical test and calculate the p-value. So I had mentioned this earlier that um, we're going to be talking about p-values today, but we're not going to be calculating p-values, right? So again, I want to preface this lecture by saying, I'm just going to calculate p-values for you in this lecture. I'm going to give you the values, right? We're not going to worry about how to calculate it just yet. In a future lecture, when we, uh, in fact, actually, we're not even going to choose a statistical test either right um, in this in this lecture we're just going to go over the broad concept of figuring out and creating a hypothesis and then going through the steps and then in our next lecture after the midterm what we'll do is I'm going to give you an example and say you know this is uh, this type of data this is this type of null and alternative hypothesis we're going to select this significance level for XYZ reason how do we calculate it? And then we'll go back, right? So then we're really going to come full circle. Today, this is really the 40,000 foot view 
uh, and that's what I want you to go ahead and focus on, right? And then the final thing is after you go ahead and you have steps one through four completed, you have all of your values in front of you and you can then either choose to support or reject the null hypothesis, right? So these terminologies are very, very important and we're gonna go over examples. Um, quite honestly, you know, this 40,000 foot view is gonna really help you understand scientific literature a little bit more and kind of help you prepare for all of this and understand, you know, when people say statistically significant, what that means, okay? So let's go ahead and let's move on. So what is the null hypothesis, right? So if you trace back to the history of science, the null hypothesis was always an accepted fact, right? Simple examples that are generally accepted uh, are the DNA is shaped like a double helix, and there are eight planets in the solar system, excluding Pluto, right? Kind of uh, statements accepted as fact, right? Remember, coming back to our swan example, you cannot prove something to be true, but you disprove by finding an exception, okay? So, moving on, how do I state I, a hypothesis, right? I, how do I go ahead and create this this hypothesis statement right over here? Mm, move this. Back. Okay, never mind. Uh, the alternative hypothesis is something that we're trying to prove or find out about, right? So let me format this a little bit while we're at this, and uh, you all will get the final formatted version. The alternative hypothesis is something that we are trying to prove or find out about, right? So. Alternative hypothesis is always going to be noted as HA. Okay, very important. Remember that HA is alternative, um, alternative hypothesis. And essentially what that means is there is an effect, right? Something is different. Something has occurred. And the null hypothesis is the opposite or it's status quo, right? And null hypothesis is always annotated as H0 or H null, right? the null hypothesis, there is no effect. There is no change, right? So a couple of things to keep in mind here that's uh, very important, right? The hypothesis is always about the population, not the sample values, right? So what does that mean? So remember, we have a group or a population, something that we're going to have refer to, and then we pull out samples, right? We always sample from the population and we hope that the sample reflects the population as a whole, right? Any inferences that we're trying to make or any statements that we're trying to make, it's about the population, not the sample that we pull out, right? Null is always status quo or no effect, right? No change, no difference. It's usually equal, to, there's no value, right? And null hypotheses always have a statement, right? It's equal to, it's greater than, it's less than, right? So it's always null hypothesis is equal to the alternative hypothesis or the null hypothesis is greater than, the alternative hypothesis or the null hypothesis is less than um, the alternative hypothesis, right? So there's always uh, going to have some sort of statement equal to, greater than, or less than. Then there's going to be a significance level, right? And the significance level is known as the alpha or this is the symbol for alpha right over here. Let me bold it for you all. It's a statistical standard that a researcher sets before the study, right? And I'm gonna go over all of this. This is actually going to be kind of the uh, simplest and most straightforward portion of, of this process, right? Uh, it defines how strongly the sample evidence must contradict the null hypothesis before you can reject the null hypothesis for the entire population, right? The strength of the evidence is defined by the probability of rejecting a null hypothesis if it's true. In other words, it is the possibility that you say there is an effect when there is no effect, right? Um, so this, this last bullet point is going to tie it all in, right? For instance, the significance level of 0 .05, 0 0.05 signifies a 5% risk 
of deciding that an effect exists when it doesn't, right? So another way to go ahead and look at this is that when we set the alpha at 0 0.05, right, we can say when we set the alpha at 0 0.05, we are we are at 5% at risk at deciding that what we're saying is there when it really isn't there, right? Another way to go ahead and look at it is to say we are 95% confident that the statement that we are making exists, right? Does that make sense, right? So 95% confident that we are uh, that we are correct, right? Or 5% confident that we are not correct. Okay, that that's essentially when you go ahead and you set the alpha. So let, let's go to a key takeaway, right? The vast majority of time, people use significance levels of 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. Now, <clears throat> 0 0.05 means that we are at 5% risk deciding that an effect exists when it doesn't, right? Making that, that's also called a type one error, right? We are, the other way to go ahead and phrase it is that we are 95% confident that we are correct, 5% confident, uh, and we are 95% confident that we are correct, that it didn't happen by chance. When it's the, when this alpha or the significance level is set at 0.01, right? It signifies a 1% risk of deciding that the effect exists when it in fact doesn't, or we are 99% confident that uh, this did not happen by chance, okay? So that's kind of the, the key terms, um, and I would really go ahead and just kind of emphasize this last bullet point right over here, which I will bold, right? 5% risk to find exists when in fact it does not exist, okay? So, um, Good. So now that we have the significance over, let's go ahead and let's review again the steps again, right? Figure out your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. That's the statement that we're going to make. Determine the significance level. Obtain your sample. This is what we're up to, right? So obtain your sample. Choose the appropriate statistical test and calculate the p-value. Either support or reject the null hypothesis, right? So just coming back full circle one more time, um, we are going to go through hypotheticals in these in for situations three and four, right? I'm not going to ask you to actually obtain a sample. I'm not going to ask you to choose a test or calculate any p-value. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to jump into a example case right over here, right? Okay, so step one, generate a hypothesis. The scenario is we want to test whether the mean cholesterol levels of a subpopulation of smokers is equal to the mean of the general population of 20 to 74 year old male, uh, let's add smokers. Okay, so the general population is 20 to 74 year old male smokers, right? And we want to know if the sample uh, is uh, if the sample is equal to the mean of the general population, right? And then so here it is, 211 ml milligrams per hundred, right? Remember, H0 is our null hypothesis, and HA is our alternative hypothesis, right? And now look, notice the statement is equal to the mean of the general population really want to go ahead and emphasize this portion is equal to the mean, right? So is this subpopulation the same as the general population? Remember, we have our big population. We have everybody in, in the class, and then we take a sample out. Now, is the sample cholesterol the same as the general population, or is it not? This is our hypothesis, right? So our null hypothesis is the sample is equal to 211, right? Remember, this is 211 is the average for the population. This is the sample. An alternative hypothesis is the average of the sample is not equal to the average of the general population, right? Notice, so coming back, we always have a statement, whether it's equal to, greater than, or less than, right? 
there the null hypothesis is there is no effect the alternative hypothesis is there is an effect so let's come back right the null hypothesis equal to equals right so if it's 211 and 211 there's there's no effect there's no change right now notice the alternative if it's not equal it's either going to be greater than or it's going to be less than 211 right so this is the alternative perspective right over here so far so good so step 1.5 now what we want to go ahead and do and i kind of alluded to it a little bit just before is this a single-sided test or a two-sided test or two-sided or single-sided test of hypothesis right now magnitude is really important in this case meaning cholesterol levels could be higher in the sample or it could be lower in the sample right so let's think back to our bell curve right over here if it's directly in the middle of the bell curve is the average we can be higher than the average or we can be lower in the average right so since we can go in either direction we're going to go ahead and make it a two-sided test right can cholesterol be higher or cholesterol be lower right so notice that the, it is possible it's possible that the mean cholesterol levels can be higher or lower thus making this a two-sided test of hypothesis right now here's the other thing too which is you have to when choosing test you have to go ahead and place things in consideration um the the magnitude in consideration too uh let me pause on that we'll go over the second example we'll, we'll i'll elaborate on that point in example number two okay so i just want to take a step back we generated our hypothesis right our null is that it is equal the sample is equal to the mean of the general population and then our alternative is that it is not equal okay we concluded that this is a two-sided test because we're interested right we're interested if it is lower we're interested if it is higher right and for the most part generally for the most part uh vast majority of the time uh, hypothesis testing is two-sided there are very specific reasons for a one-sided test which we'll go over in example two right so s determine the significance level right do we want a and and remember like i said this is going to be the easiest point right over here do we want 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 and for the vast majority and for the purposes of this group we are going to set our alpha at 0.05 right very important just remember this symbol means alpha which means significance level okay and this means that we are 95 percent confident that the results that we had did not occur due to chance right or coming back uh where is it or that a significance level of 0 0.05 signifies a 5% risk of deciding that an effect exists when it does not exist, right? So we're taking a 5% risk. So we decided we're going to set our significance level, our alpha at 0 0.05. That's it. For this step, that's all we have to do. So let's regroup, right? We set our null hypothesis. We generated our hypothesis statement. We have our null, which is equal to all alternative which is not equal to we know that this is a two-sided test because cholesterol levels can come higher than 211 the sample cholesterol levels could be lower than 211 right so we're good either way and we're interested we're interested in if it's higher or lower right and then we set our alpha and now this is when we would go ahead and obtain our sample right so we're going to randomly sample from our population of interest right we're interested in uh smokers right male smokers of a certain age here we have you know 20 30 40 doesn't matter a certain number of people of male smokers in there and now we're gonna we've taken all we know all of their cholesterol levels right and now we randomly take 12 and then we go ahead and we measure their cholesterol and we see that their average or x bar x bar means average of the randomly sampled 12 individuals have a cholesterol level of 217 over 100 right 
remember, I'm just giving you uh, the data here, right? In our next, in two classes from now, what we're actually going to do is have data sets where we would then go ahead and here's one data set, here's the population, we draw the sample from it, make the comparison, right? Um, but now I'm just giving you this information. So we obtain our sample. We would then go ahead and calculate the p-value. Again, mentioned this before, uh, there isn't an expectation that you're going to calculate p-values, but let me walk you through this one real quick, right? So p-values are typically calculated in statistical software in SAS. So ultimately, what we would do and how this would look like in SAS would be um, importing the data set. You then have, uh, you would then calculate the means from your population. You would use the PROC survey select, which is what you used last time to obtain a sample. You would then calculate those means, and then you would choose an appropriate test. It could be a t-test, it could be a chi-square, right? Depending on what the research question is, that'll give us a z-score. A z-score has a corresponding value at different significant levels, right? And you look it up in the table, and that's gonna go ahead and give you your p-value, right? Again, we're not gonna go over that in this lecture. This is something that's better suited for in person, but essentially the z-score uh, formula is right over here, right? So if you wanted to go ahead and practice calculating z-scores by hand, at least you have a good starting point. Um, now, remember, I'm gonna give you the p-value, right? Uh, or SAS is gonna spit out a p-value. And this is how you interpret the p-value. It's it's pretty simple from here, and this is the uh, really the key and the most important part. If the p-value is less than the significance level or the alpha, right? Let me put this down. You would reject the null hypothesis. The sample has given you evidence that the null hypothesis is wrong, right? Therefore, making it statistically significant, okay? So if the value is less than, notice, let me highlight this, less than, very important than the significance value, AKA the alpha, right? So what is our, what did we set the significance level here? All right, pause it, give yourself a uh, time to think. We set the alpha at 0 0.05, right? There's only two choices, 0 0.01 or 0 0.05. You set it, don't forget that, you set the alpha, right? You would reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. The sample has given you evidence that the null hypothesis is wrong, right? So the term reject, we reject the null hypothesis, okay? So let's actually give you the values like I had promised, right? So now the population, the cholesterol, overall cholesterol uh, of our population, the X bar, the mean is 211, right? Our sample is 217. Right, so on the face of it, you're looking and you're saying, oh, look, it's actually higher, right? And we set our alpha at 0 0.05. So if we went through all of the calculations or if you punched it in through SAS, you would have gotten a p-value of 0 0.652, right? 0 0.652. So I'm gonna go back one slide, right? I'm gonna go back one slide and I'm gonna say this. If the p-value is less than the significance level or the alpha, you reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative, right? So the question is, 0.652 is, now take a pause and answer, right? Is it greater than, less than, or equal to 0 0.05, right? It is greater than 0 0.05. Okay, so what does that mean? Take a minute, think about this. And we're gonna come back. The last step is to either support or reject the null hypothesis. 
since the p-value of 0.652 is greater than the alpha, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. The differences found in the sample is not statistically significant, right? So let's come back and let's take a look. On the face of this, right, if we were only doing descriptive statistics, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, look, it, there is a difference, right? Like clearly 217 is more than 211 right over here, right? But after we apply a statistical test and we said, you know what, and we set our confidence level or our alpha at 0 0.05, right? The value works out to 0.62, which means, hey, guess what? There is a difference, but most likely it was due to chance. It was due to just random luck of the draw, right? Really, no findings here, keep moving on, right? So again, the last step is to either support or reject the null hypothesis. Since the p-value is equal to 0.65 is greater than the alpha, greater than, right? Everyone agree 0.652 is more than 0 0.05, right? So 62 cents versus 5 cents, right? Another way to go ahead and look at it. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. I'm highlighting this bold because this is the terminology that you need to use. Okay, this is this is scientific lingo. You have to go ahead and say it this way. Right? We fail to reject the null hypothesis. You would never go ahead and say something like, uh, since the p-value is 0.62 is greater than the alpha 0.05, we accept the alternative. We never accept the alternative, right? We fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? And this comes back to this slide, right? You never prove anything to be true. You disprove it by finding an exception, okay? So let that marinate a little bit with you here. We're going to come back. So just to kind of go ahead and reiterate in this example, our null hypothesis, remember HO, right, uh, claims that the mean cholesterol levels of smokers was identical to the mean cholesterol levels of the general population. If the p-value was less than the alpha, we would have rejected the null hypothesis and the differences were be found would have been statistically significant. But the p-value was not smaller than the alpha, was it, right? It was greater than, so therefore we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So take a minute, really go ahead and kind of sit this one through and think this, think, uh, think this one through right over here. I know that it could be a little confusing, but um, just bear with it read through it a couple of times, and then let's go through the example and uh, the, the next example, and we'll go from there, okay? So example two, again, step one, we want to go ahead and we want to generate a hypothesis. We want to test whether the hemoglobin levels of children under the age of six who have been exposed to high levels of lead, right? We want to know whether the mean hemoglobin levels of this population is equal to the mean of the general population, which is 12.29, okay? So here's our null hypothesis. Remember, H0 is our null hypothesis, and HA is our alternative hypothesis, therefore. So what we're going to go ahead and do now, and notice this is a little bit different, we're not using uh, we're not using equal anymore. We're saying uh, the mean of the children exposed to lead is greater than or equal to, well, let's just make this greater than, it'll be easier, greater than 12.29 or the, uh, the mean of the children exposed to lead is less than 12.29, right? So now, Here's going to be a big note in the step 1.5, right, or generating a hypothesis. Is this a single-sided test or a two-tailed test, right? Remember, you have to go ahead. You make this decision. You are in control. Do we want to do a single-sided test or do we want to do a two-sided test, right? Now, the, the easiest way to go ahead and kind of think this through is think through harm, right? Is there harm... Uh, or is there anything that, that can hurt somebody, right? Uh, 
So let's think about this. We would agree that exposure to a toxic substance is not beneficial to children. Therefore, we only anticipate harmful effects occurring. Okay, so again, I want you to think back to this, this normal distribution that we're going to go ahead and point out where you have uh, one tail on one side, it's pointy, and then you have another tail, and then you have your, your normal distribution, and then the average is right smack in the middle, right? Now, because of this research question, how harmful or is it harmful, right? When you formulate this question, if it's harm and can only cause harm, it can only go in one direction. Does that make sense? Right? When we talk about the cholesterol level and we're comparing cholesterol levels, it could be both ways, higher cholesterol, lower cholesterol. But the research question here is harm. How harmful? A little harm or a lot of harm? right? There's no situation where you would go ahead and say, hey, let me give children lead and think that it's going to be beneficial, right? The direction is only harm. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Like when the direction is only harm, there's only one way that you can go. It's either bad or really bad, right? Uh, another scenario could be like getting hit by a car, right? It's, it's bad or or really, really bad or catastrophic, right? It's only one direction. The outcome is only in one direction. You know that the outcome is in one direction. Then you go with a one-sided test. When you have something that can go either way, right? We're gonna go ahead and test out the effects of the ketogenic diet, right? We're gonna do a keto diet right over here. Well, we can affect, it's, it's possible that the effects go both ways, right? It's possible that somebody goes on the keto diet and then actually gains weight instead. Am I, the, am I following? So if that's the case, then what you would do is you would do a two-sided test, right? Because the magnitude, the direction can go either way. But when you know for a fact that it can only go in one direction, then you do a single-sided test, right? So uh, we would agree that exposure to, oh, this should be lead, sorry. Exposure to, we would agree to, ex, we would agree that exposure to A toxic substance such as lead is not beneficial for children. Therefore, we anticipate only harmful effects occurring, right? So remember, our null hypothesis is that, let me make this greater. Our null hypothesis is greater than 12.29, right? An alternative is going to be less. Coming back to our alpha, our significance level, 0 0.05, right? We're going to be 95% confident right over here or 5% at risk. Same as before, we go ahead, we draw our random sample from our population of interest. So, you know, in this case, we select 74 children randomly from the population, right? Although it's children, uh, let's take a moment right over here for extra credit. <laughs> let's see if you all listening through this lecture the whole way, right? For extra credit, email me, let's say five points on the midterm exam. Email me, because this is children, uh, and they all go to school in New York City, email me a sampling schema that you can go ahead and do to obtain the 74 children. Okay, so for five points, extra credit, uh, do this, send this over to me before the midterm. Uh, and this'll give me an idea if you all are listening. Okay, cool. So the 74 randomly selected children of mean lead levels of 10.6 grams per 100 milliliter, okay? Again, p-values, we calculate the p-values, we, we pick a test, we put it into SAS, it spits it out. If you wanted to hand calculate it, the first step is to calculate a z-score, right? Uh, so you go ahead, you take your mean, you take the standard deviation, you take your score, you plug it into this formula, you look it up in a corresponding table, and that table is then gonna give you your p-value. 
if the p-value is less than the significance level, you reject the null hypothesis. And uh, if the sample is giving you evidence that the null hypothesis is wrong. So here we go. Here are our values again. The population is 12.29. The uh, grams of lead per 100 milliliters. The sample mean is 10.6 grams per 100 milliliters. 10.6 grams of lead per 100 milliliters, right? So here is the overall population. Here is the sample that we have. We set the alpha at 0 0.05, and the p-value works out to being 0 0.001, right? So let's take a moment right over here. I want you all to go back to slide I want you to go back to slide 16 look at slide 16 and apply it to slide 22 right we know that the p-value is 0 0.001 let's take a pause okay come back formulate your statement we are going to either support or reject the null hypothesis since the p-value 0 0.001 is smaller than the alpha 0 0.05 we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative the differences found in the sample is statistically significant right because the p-value was smaller than the alpha we fall in and we're 95 percent confident that this did not happen by chance right so a, a really quick summary if your p-value is less than 0 0.05, then chances are whatever hypothesis that you're looking for is in fact the alternative, right? Is in fact there is an effect and it is statistically significant. And that is typically where people go ahead and kind of cheer, right? And say, oh, look, this effect happened and it didn't happen by chance. And so really what I want you all to go ahead and do is substitute your own scenarios in here, right? When you generate a hypothesis. And, um, you know, you can, you can go forth and then just kind of follow along these five steps to then go ahead and kind of figure out all of the, um, on, on all, all of the processes to figure out kind of a hypothesis. And just note that step four is what we're going to really start to go ahead and take a deep dive into the second half of the semester, right? The second half of the semester is all about identifying tests to do to calculate p-values, right? So now you have an overview. Um, you know, I'm really excited because the second half of the semester is actually what, what's gonna be the most fun portion, right? We're gonna start working with real data, coming up with our own hypotheses. Uh, so yeah, this is, this will kind of wrap up this portion. I'm gonna go ahead and share some more videos in this slide for you all. Uh, email me if you have any questions and you know, look forward to seeing you all soon. All right. Bye, everyone.